being put in a grease trap for three hours that is not even 30 inches high where you can't sit up in a grease trap and you're crawling on your belly above the grills, above the seat, like not, you're not above the ceiling, but you're hanging in the grease traps above the grills. You had to get up, we had to get up on the counter, the kitchen counter with the tall eight foot ladder on top of that to then steer me into crawling on my belly into this grease trap that has a one inch deep liquidy, greasy, off the grills grease that then smears all over my skin, in on my body, into my cells, and I'm up there for three hours. Well, I actually wasn't up there for three hours. I was ordered up there by Ryan Boswell for three hours. Ryan Boswell, chief of security. For the pack base, pack yes. Base. And why were you the big sentenced blue to the grease trap punishment? Oh, because I was serving a meat to... Um, the crew, the people that work in the big blue building, which is a thousand people, including Bridge. I was serving a meat that wasn't, that had um, bad ing ingredients in it. It wasn't just like pure grass-fed beet beef. I see. So the grease, crap, grease trap punishment is quite famous. So I'm glad you described it in detail. So for three hours... I was up there on my stomach scraping the grease into these small buckets, handing them down to Barbara Tompkins, who was watching me down on the floor. And um, I didn't actually last three hours because I think I lasted about two hours and 40 minutes-ish. And then I literally had a psychotic break. I, I started screaming and I had to get out. Like I was claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. I had, I don't know, I had all kinds of weird pictures of being put into a little box and shoved and and I was, with my hand, I bent a piece of metal that was the vent below, and I was slamming it, slamming it, and Barbara was like, calm down, Camilla, calm down. And um, she went and got the ladder and got me down, and I was like shaking, and oh, it was just, and I have never forgot that, exp that that's beyond anything ever. Um, the thing that, in addition to that, is that that was normal practice yes. for a lot of people. Yes. I've heard of the grease trap punishment. Um, I had never seen anybody be up there for three hours before. I seen them be up there for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, never three hours. Mm -hmm. And it is purely disgusting. Like you throw out all clothes that you're wearing and you scrub your body with dish soap, mm -hmm. trying to get the smell out. And even after I did that, I could smell that rancid grease from the grills for days. Okay, so in 1998 is when I got assigned to the RPF. Rehabilitation Project Force. And at that time, because we were on the gold base, we didn't go down to the blue building to do that. We were at a special project out um, in Happy Valley, past the Indian reservations up in the mountains. When I arrived there, I was in a state of shock. The birthing facility that we were in, we were living in trailers. There was four trailers that were not trailers that you live in, but trailer that you ship cargo in and they were just made out of that flimsy whatever I don't even know the material but it's you know it's not insulation so in the summer you're in the desert so in the summer you know it's over 120 in these things 24 hours a day and in the winter it's like minus 40 24 hours a day because it magnifies the cool of the hot um, the food that we got while we were out there came on a wheelbarrow it was lukewarm food that came over from the gold base in big pans and um, it was wrapped in silver foil and um, most of the time you had the dust and the dirt in it. Well, you didn't have the dirt, like nobody poured the dirt in it, what but you know. What was the labor? What was the punishment? What was the punishment going on in the RPF? What were you doing? Um, the project that we were doing, we did a lot of projects, but the real thing that was the most horrid that we did is we were doing the flood channel for the Happy Valley. In other words, we were up in the mountains. So you're in Santa Santa Mountain Range and you're up in the mountains and you go even further into the mountain and that is where the flood channel is. And we had to basically move the flood channel. We had to move the rocks and the boulders into correct configuration because um, we were so in the mountain that 
big equipment couldn't get in there. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sure it could, but it cost probably millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. We were $10 a week labor, mm -hmm. if even that. So we were sent in there to do that. And it was just horrid. We were using sticks and wheelbarrows and um, sheets and leather tarps to like move the rocks and mm -hmm. you know use leverage. And it was just brutal, brutal, brutal. We were up there for days and days and days and days. Really, machinery should have been used, actual machines, to do that kind of project. But once you sign your billion-year contract, that's why the word human trafficking is used a lot. You're just this little cog in a wheel. You're a slave. And if you have to pick up rocks and boulders, and if you have to work 14 hours a day and eat all of a twist slop for $10 a week, how, how many hours a day were you working this project? Um... At least 10, if not more. Yeah. So there were some days that we did 10 hours or more because um, we had to meet certain targets before the rain come. Mm -hmm. Because the whole, the whole, th we were expecting a rainstorm or a, I don't forgot what the words are for these things, but basically when a lot of water mm -hmm. and California is all sand, so everything just starts moving, you know? So the whole idea was that we would save the whole property by doing this. Um, the way we would go to work in a day is we would march in twos. Um, and it was dusty and dirty and we were out in the desert and I'm telling you I had flashbacks to World War II camps and it's not that I've been in them but I grew up in Denmark and World War II is in your face when you go to school. Um, my family was German Jewish so it was all like what you talked about. My mother was a teenager during the war. So all of this was like what you learn when you grow up, and now I'm there feeling, feeling like a prisoner, slave, slave camp, whatever, same concept, you know. And I guess it was freedom because we could go practice Scientology at night, but what we were going through physically and mentally, I'm talking mentally from the hard labor, was something I'll never, ever experience again. It's... To me, it's not even human to do that. You should have had equipment. The only places in the world that I've known this has been done is like Egypt building the pyramids maybe or Chinese people building the Wall of China like thousands of years ago. They will talk to you and talk to you and talk to you and convince you not to go, or at least not go right now, send you to Old Gilman House, where you'll do grueling, physical, hard, nasty work, digging trenches in the sun, um, whatever else, I don't even know, but it just goes on and on what they do out there. It's physical, nasty, hard labor. And in the meantime, they want your crimes and confessionals. They want crimes because you're yes. asking to leave. Yes, you need a clearance, you need an approval to go. And it takes a year or more to wait. And you can ask anyone who routed out, which is what the name of it is, like when you do the proper leaving procedure. correctly procedure, that's what it takes.